Hello everyone, my name is Rina Tkachuk, I'm an artist and the founder of the permanent makeup studio T-Lab. After our last video a lot of questions arose. These are about kind of stroke I use in my works. Today I'd like to show you this very moment in macro photography and slowly. I can't just call it a stroke, I can't call it something in a word. That's why it's probably easier to show. Let's get started. Pay attention, guys, that we are working using quite big needle depth, somewhere around 3 mm. The supply of paint should be good, the drawing should clearly remain on the surface, and we begin to leave the dot with light air spraying movements, thereby creating such a three-dimensional drawing. If we see in the process that somewhere we haven't finished painting, we can locally return to this place, add there are some dots, and this way little by little filling by spraying superficially our voluminous eyebrow. Note that there are gaps between the points and air remains. And thus this very airiness is created, which is often lacking. When we are trying to paint over everything, we lose this airiness. But by placing the dots in such a way, you can keep the airiness. The apparatus moves anyway. The needle is moving up and down, even if we draw a line. We see clearly that it is drawing not a line, but dots. That is, we move our device straight, but get a dot. We can neatly fill in the places where we are missing. The main thing is that these movements are not heavy. That is, hold your hands so that they are light and airy. We are moving somewhere along this trajectory. We put points in a circular motion along a circular path. It doesn't mean that we must stick into the skin and dispose these curls. No, we just place a point along this trajectory and accordingly we can see that we have air and those gaps between our points. You know, working on a brow it's quite difficult to grasp this technique. So, moving along a circular path will allow to fill in where we need. And if we want more airy space, then we increase the trajectory a little. We increase a bit the diameter of circle, which we are moving along. If you need vice versa to condense, then we reduce accordingly. That is, most often we tighten the middle and we make the sides more diffused more airy. It can be either bottom or bottom top or only top. That is depending on what effect you want to get. Repeating once again that we move the machine as if straight and it sets the dots by itself. No matter which line we move it, anyway the device will put exactly dots. If we move it to machine slowly, it will draw almost a straight line, namely frequent dots. It's obvious that in this case we have a row of dots, and if we move quickly, then we'll get these points infrequent. Here it's important to observe hand speed and the speed of the apparatus. One more main thing to remember is that we lightly, lightly clean to the skin. We don't need to hammer the pigment into the skin, we must put it gently, put on surface. The needle will pierce the skin itself. That is, the needles are sharp enough, so they themselves will penetrate into it and bring pigment in. Slowly moving along our trajectory, drawing curls or bagels, call it as you wish, we create our picture. That is, we kind of make strokes on some zigzag, circular, that is, what is more convenient for you. But in this technique, you guys should understand that you should feel the skin well and clearly. That is, if you don't feel the skin for now, then practice this technique on the mat, but work using more familiar one. Because it is very easy in this technique, moving chaotically, not to get evenness. If you have the skill, it's not hard, well, on the contrary, it even speeds up the work to some extent. If your hand is not used to the technique, then practice this movement on latex, not to make spots. You can see that I'm moving the machine straight, but still I get dots. Most often artists work in this technique. It's actually happening, the technique of shading towards oneself. For some reason it seems to me more dense than if working with circular, 
these accurate paths. But if you work in such a technique, you can apply for example a stroke towards yourself, then just rearrange your hand and to work diagonally, focusing in the middle, so this way you'll get a tighter midsection, while the edges remain lighter and more airy. And in the same way the other side, that is across the previous movement. So we create density in the middle of the eyebrow, where we have the bulk of the growth, and the edges remain as airy and light as possible. The middle is dark, the edges are shaded on one and the other side, so they look airy, and the middle is dense. Now I'll show you separately. Here we have made a straight stroke, now diagonally and the other side. Cross straight onto yourself, to one side of the diagonal and to the other side of the diagonal. Thus your middle will always be denser, that is, you move along it several times. The edge is fluffy, you can fluff it up there even more, that is again, it depends on the effect you want to achieve. And always try to walk right through the edge. If you can from yourself, then take an edge that is more convenient for you and shade it from yourself. If the bottom is more comfortable, then towards yourself. As for the middle, do the way which is convenient for you, for example, by strokes, curls or bagels. The main thing is to feel the skin, because if you don't feel the skin, then you'll not manage to paint over it as much as possible. Now I'd like to explain to you which scheme I use drawing layers on brows. So imagine that we have an eyebrow. The first layer I draw like this. In this format, namely, this is all my first layer, even before anesthesia. I don't apply primary anesthesia. That is, I work the entire surface, then I'm returning, but coming back all over my brow, including capturing the top. That is what we get. It turns out that I went through this part twice. Here I was only once, because I need to have the top and the head remain lighter. Then the third pass. I focus on the middle line, that is, I'm moving from the tail with such kind of like fan movements, leaving the edge gentle here, but tighten the middle line more. So we have filled in everything. The head of the brow we work out from ourselves or sit behind the client's head and move towards ourselves. That is, you can move either in this direction or in this one. In this kind of feeling, the middle line is the darkest part because we move along it at least three times. And bottom line of the eyebrow, that is the darkest part that we have in the natural brow. Top part remains lighter and airy. Besides, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that if you have extremely white eyebrows and you need to paint over, for instance, such a plane, don't try to do it at once with one stroke, because it's very difficult to control depth of the puncture on such a long stroke. Divide it into three parts, work through this part with short strokes, and you'll clearly control the movement. Then you will work out the second part, but covering the first one, so that you don't have joints. Having drawn the second part, again controlling our skin puncture. And now the third part, covering the previous one. In this case, you get a very even shaded surface. Also, I would like to show it in paper. So I make a stroke movement towards myself, but it's actually not complete stroke, and this is rather such a kind of shading. That is, I move more in a chaotic pattern. Probably like this. Then I get these dots painted over, so here it is. Да, и тогда получается, что у меня есть прокрасы вот этих вот точечек. Вот. 
but here emptiness remains, and your skin shines through. Respectively, the brow is airy and gentle. I try to tell you to reveal the key points which I use while working. Would like to remind that today I worked with the machine must. It's the device which we use at the studio, and we have made a review on it. The cartridge was quadrone. Generally, I use only them, and at a reduced voltage. That's to say, this technique which I talked about today, it takes place at a reduced voltage, because if there is an increased voltage, then this chaotic lines trajectory, chaotic trajectory along which you move the apparatus, it will turn into a line, which is not good. But when the device moves slowly. You're not drawing a line, but still you're scattering these dots. That's all. See you in the next video. Don't forget to give thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Bright flashing by the